what people do we refuse to answer? <laughs> well, there's probably a long list there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah. If we go through them one by one, if we start with the issue of love, yep. if a person, we can feel a person is, has an unwillingness to love, they have no desire to grow in love, mm -hmm. no desire to, particularly with love of God, mm -hmm. then of course, we're not probably going to answer them. And the only time we might answer them is mm -hmm. if we feel there was some public setting or some kind of public thing that we could, uh, where um, we could teach a whole group of people about love through the interaction. Lesson. Yeah, yep. yeah, I've got to. So keeping in mind that all spiritual development is development in love, yes. if a person is refusing to love and they have no interest in love, then there's no point well, our, our, for us. I no mean. point for us. Yeah, yeah. They might have a point with other people interacting yeah. with them, yeah. but the reality is that our focus and desire is all about love. Yeah. And if, if a person doesn't want to love and doesn't want to learn about love, then from our perspective, it, it's not something we want to spend a lot of time on. Our big focus is assisting people who want, want to, love. to love. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, they don't fit into that focus. Yeah. So that's uh, number one. Yeah. Number two would be um, the same goes with truth. So if a person has no desire for universal truth mm -hmm. or no desire for personal truth um, and they have little desire to grow in universal truth or grow in personal truth or they already think they know the truth mm -hmm. uh, about things and they're very argumentative about that, then there's highly unlikely we're going to respond to them at all. Yeah. So. You know, you can see that people like Christians who write us a whole heap of things about the Bible, uh, quoting a whole heap of scripture and basically lecturing us yeah. and not asking any questions, it's highly unlikely they're going to receive a response because we can feel from them that they don't want truth. Yeah. They don't want to know the problems with their belief system. And they're not searching for truth. And it's only the people who are seeking for truth that will find it. Mm -hmm. So, or even have the capacity to hear it. Yeah. Or, so, you know, we're not going to respond to those yeah. people. Yeah, so there's the issue of universal or God's truth, mm -hmm. and then there's the issue of personal truth, isn't there? Correct. If we feel that a person, if we can feel that a person is close to yes. receiving personal truth about themselves and they don't even want to work through the issues that block them from receiving personal truth, yeah. then given that a requirement of humility or an aspect of humility which opens us to being loving and receiving God's truth yeah. is this this openness to receiving personal truth. Correct. So you could say that's two and three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In one, two, yeah. universal truth, not open to receiving yeah. it. Three, not open to receiving personal truth. Yeah. Probably not going to respond to you. Yeah. And the only time again that we would if we feel we're in a setting where a, a, la a larger majority of people could benefit from the interaction. Yeah. Um, what are we up to? Four? Four. Four is probably about humility. It is. So, you know, is the person humble? Mm -hmm. Do they have a desire to feel their emotions? Yeah. Do they really want to feel themselves? Do they really want to work their way through their emotional injuries? Or are they just talking about it? Mm -hmm. Or are they faking it or in a facade? Or are they in their addiction? Or if, they just, if they're just making out their emotional when they're not really dealing with any real core emotions, and then again, we don't feel that they match that requirement of being humble. Yeah. They're, not, yeah. they're not living a life of humility. And it's really hard to help people who are not humble. Yeah. Because to, to receive help you, and receive knowledge, you've got to be a humble person because quite frequently that knowledge will be completely different than what you expect yes. and completely different than what you believe. And what you're invested in hearing and all Correct. of those things. Yeah. And of course, there's people out there who aren't yet feeling like fully free to feel all of their emotions all of the time, but they, they have some desire within them to remove their arrogance or their self-importance or to remove those issues that prevent them living humbly all the time. And so they will get a response. They will get a response, <laughs> but the people who have no, none of those, they're not humble and they have no desire to change that, then they're not going to hear from us. No. And unless, again, unless it is in a situation where a large majority of people can benefit from the interaction. So, you know, I might write an email response outlining all of their problems yeah. and put it on the net yeah. so that people could see yes. um, all of the different problems with what they've su suggested or said yeah. in regard to 
humility, love, truth, and so forth, mm -hmm. just from a teaching perspective. Yeah. But I won't do it to punish them, and I won't no. do it to expose them. I'm just doing it because I feel like, oh, there's a lot of learning lessons that we can gather here. Yeah. But that's the only time they yeah. would get a response. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. I suppose the next um, sort of category of uh, people who contact us are people who are attacking, who are abusive, who are mm. belittling, who are violent in their words or actions. Mm. Um, it's sad, really, that people yeah. think they can do that. Um, yeah. It is a demonstration of their arrogant condition, that they feel that they can email someone they don't even know and abuse them for no reason other than that they their opinion disagrees with their own. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that um, they feel so righteous in those kind of yeah, yeah. We get a lot of Christians who are in that or religious people generally who are in that zone. Yeah, and um, and non religious people who feel very yeah. angry about uh Cults Jesus or whatever, or, or cults or <laughs> God, or, yeah, yeah, and they know, feel we're exploiting people, or yeah, or you sometimes, yeah. There's all sorts of people. It's, it's so interesting many. that we get yeah. abuse from a wide range of people. <laughs> not, we don't just uh, not, get it from one. We just group. don't stir up one group. It's <laughs> uh, every group. Of <laughs> and you know, people like that uh, don't have, have no desire to love. Yeah, a person who loves would never choose to abusively attack another person for any reason whatsoever, yeah. any reason, yeah. whether they believe that person is an abuser themselves or not. Mm -hmm. Like I don't go around abusively attacking all the abusers in the world and, and a person who loves would never do so. No. You know, that's not the way to get a response out of those people. And it's not the way to actually bring about loving change no. or to bring out the best in people or to, yes. yeah. And people who do that are very coarse yeah. uh, in the sense that they, obviously have a lot of emotional injuries that they're yet to address and they want to blame the world or other people mm. in the world for what is coming out of them. And also they're not open to truth, they're not open to love, they're not humble, and so they don't meet the first three or four of our requirements <laughs> in the list, in yeah. this list. And so at the end of the day, we feel not attracted at all to answering their questions. Yeah. And in fact, if we receive a continuous stream of abuse from them, at the end of the day, we'd probably just, just block their email up. account and block all access that they would have to us in any way. Yeah, and I suppose that in that category, we do attract at times people who are almost what I would call stalkers, yeah. who they may not be overtly attacking and, abu uh, well, but they're, no, abusive they're abusive in the way in which they use our time. Yes, and we've demand asked them to not attention. do it and their demand for personal engagement and their lack of regard for our request that they stop contacting us. Correct. Um, and that they respect our time, that our time... And they respect our will, that yeah. we don't want to engage with them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, and there's a lot of people around who don't respect other people's will. They just yeah. keep badgering and pestering and yeah. abusing the person in the hope that eventually the person will respond. Yeah. Will we respond less when you do that? Yes. And, and, and the more you do it, the less we will respond until the end, we won't respond to at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean at all, you yeah. won't get, you won't, we won't answer our phone if it's you, yeah. we won't, we won't, you know, you won't get any responses, emails, we'll block all of your emails. And you know, that's because, because those kind of people are, have proven to us, there's no desire to love, mm -hmm. there's no desire for truth, they're not humble, yeah. they have no, they all, all they want to do is harm somebody else. Yeah. Well, if that's what you want to do, sorry go and do it. I'm sorry that you have to do it. It's yeah. a pretty sad statement of your own condition if you want to do that, yeah. but it's certainly not something we're yeah. going to enable. Mm. Yeah, and sadly we have people who write to us using one email account and we say, please stop contacting us. They continue to do it, so we block that email account. Yes. They create a new email account. Yes, which is a demonstration of how unloving they are. Yes, that they do not want to respect. So they try to circumvent the rule. Yeah. And, and this is what they try to do also with God's laws. They're always trying to manoeuvre around God's and God's laws and trying to manoeuvre themselves around that law and this law. And, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what they're like with God. That's what, if they're like that with God, they're going to be like that with me and vice yeah. versa. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if, if you like it with anybody, you like that with God. And well, I just feel like, right. well, if you're basically proving that you're a lawless individual who basically just wants what they want. And, and, and I'm feels not very in entitled. Entitled to well, yeah, it's to yeah. entitlement, demand, yeah. anger, rage, all sorts yeah. of emotions that drive it. But at the end of the day, it's not a sincere emotion of progressing that yeah. drives it. And so we really don't want to have much to do with you yeah. <laughs> as a result. Yeah. 
develop some sincerity if you want to yes. if you want to have some interactions with us develop some sincerity yeah. be honest we're, we're happy to have ang- interactions with people who are even angry but they're honest yeah and who even can see their own la- their anger is their own lack of loving con- concern or consideration for others yeah. that's a much more honest person yes yeah. and yeah, I often feel that if only people could feel our feelings towards someone who approaches us in sincerity, um, as opposed to people who approach us with demand and abuse, like mm-hmm. we just have a policy, we cannot give you attention for our own good, for your good, for everyone's good in this situation, we cannot no. go there. Whereas some people who write to us who perhaps they're struggling with humility or personal truth but there's a real sincerity then our heart is very yeah just like like god loves those kind of people and and we do too yeah god god really enjoys interacting with people whether they're angry or not whether by based on their sincerity yeah and and you know while i feel if a person is just swearing because that's what they sincerely feel (laughs) well i go well if you sincerely feel that if you had true sincerity you would recognize that, that that's out of not a loving thing to feel yeah. so there's obviously a problem of some kind yeah. it'll be great if you recognize that because if you don't recognize that then we're probably not going to have much to do with you either yeah. and by the way god doesn't either yeah. like god's love cannot flow to a person who's in rejection of love or rejection of truth or rejection of being humble yeah. it, it just can't yeah. so why do you expect us to mm-hmm. care about, about it yeah. when god yeah. herself doesn't yeah. does not respond to such things yeah. and and god cares about the individual just like we do like we care that people are in that state it's mm-hmm. sad that they're in that state they have to have got in, in that state through not only a lot of actions other people have taken towards them but also through a lot of decisions of their own yeah. and it's sad that they've made those choices and decisions but at the end of the day we can't change them all we can do is prevent ourselves from having our time um, used up by them yeah in the end we don't we're not angry with them or upset no. with them but we don't want our time used up by them that's right that's right this is mm. like i said it's a simple decision mm. we just can't go there mm. um all right so, yeah, so the, that's the abusers that's and the, the attackers and the people who act in violent ways and they've got no sincere desire to change and by the way that is if they, we notice that they're nice and kind to us but if they're violent to other people we know or have observed them being violent to other people we know and like being so yeah then we go hang on a sec if you're being kind to us and not nice to other people then actually you haven't learned the lesson here yeah. you're only nice to people you respect and and you're not nice to everybody and a person who you know wants to know about love wants to be loving to everybody not just to people they respect yes yeah yeah exactly Hmm. yeah all right well let's talk about six uh, the sixth category if you like which we've already kind of touched on which is this is people who are controlling and manipulative and they've got zero desire to surrender to god's laws yeah honestly i have very little time for these kind of people (laughs) main reason why is because i feel even when they ask a question it's all manipulation it's Mm -hmm. all just manipulation of issues and facts and also they are asking question when they really want to make a statement many times you know yeah. I, I, I that kind and that's of, very deceptive it's oh, very it's dishonest, deceitful you know it? dishonest yeah. these yeah. kind of people haven't even learnt to be honest about what they truly feel at least the attacker <laughs> is honest <laughs> about what he feels yes. and is willing to verbally abuse you with it the person who's manipulative deceitful hasn't even yet learnt to be honest about what yes. they truly feel yes and 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 so i feel they're even in a lot of ways were they, they will they will encourage me less to respond to them than the attacker would yes i would rather respond to an attacker than a person who's deceitful manipulative and controlling uh, yeah i would <laughs> share that sentiment yeah. um yeah yeah so they're not going to get much from us no. <laughs> <laughs> except again if there's some kind of learning experience so there's some people that fit into this category which we've we've talked to yeah. like you know it comes to mind people over a guy yeah. overseas Um, who we've talked to many times about his deceitful dishonest facade and the way he manipulates and controls other people he's often involved in other people's so-called divine truth stuff and we can't have anything to do with him because he is deceitful and dishonest and he and he and he eventually verbalize verbally attacks us through anything we say Mm -hmm. and and we just feel like well yeah you haven't learned the basics of love yet mate you know like you haven't even learned that you're not even being honest yeah let alone you know yeah. this and what he expresses to us isn't his real 
like is well it's his real feelings but he doesn't express it to other people and he's the kind of person who involves everybody in his arguments with us as well yeah. a person like that it's just you know they have very little desire for truth personal truth no humility yeah. not much point in responding no no mm. All right, well, probably in a similar vein, the seventh group are people who are condescending, belittling, ridiculing of ourselves or others, mm. and that they can't even see that they're being like that and they just don't even want to change it. No. There's a lot of people who have a really strong emotional injury that they believe themselves to be superior to others, and that superiority comes across in every word and deed they engage and yet they have no personal awareness or knowledge of their own condition. Mm. And, uh, and those kind of people are definitely not truth seekers or love seekers. No. Um, they often are in a facade. They want to give the impression they're seeking truth and the impression that they're loving yeah. when they're not. Yeah. And we find them very obnoxious, actually, yeah. and have very little feelings of attraction towards them. Yeah. And uh, again, only will engage them if there's a learning lesson for a group of other people. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next, people who are selfish, self self absorbed, vain, who want <laughs> glory and attention, yeah. who who don't want to, you know, change that to remove that sort of arrogant, self important viewpoint of themselves. Mm. These people I have a bit more compassion for, yeah, um, because they, you know. The world today is creating self-absorbed children, you know, who Definitely. only see themselves. It's a huge injury. Yeah. And they only see, they see themselves as the centre of God's universe. Yeah. And almost they see themselves as the God of the universe. Yeah. Um, in terms of their actions and the way they mm. treat other people. Mm -hmm. And it is a sad injury, but we feel less, we don't feel as neg uh, you know, negatively inclined to respond to them as yeah. others because of the, you know, there is a, particularly if they have some sincerity about the injury being present. Yeah. But if they have no sincerity about the injury, it is very, very difficult to interact with them because they always believe that what you say to them isn't worth valuing as much as their own opinion. Yeah. And so it's very hard for them to receive any truth. Yeah. Um, they always believe they know better than you do. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how much your life demonstrates the oppositeness of the conditions yeah. and their life demonstrates their poorer condition, they still want to believe that they are superior. And it's just sad. Yeah. Um, it, and we find it very hard interacting with them, obviously. Yeah. And, and these are people who often email us and say, look, I've watched this and I've watched that and you've said this and all of that, but look, I'm different. It doesn't apply to me what applies to other people. I'm a special case. And God doesn't really have a special case. No. The laws operate in the same way. God has no special children either. No. We're all special. Yeah. <laughs> like there's no one person who's more special than anyone else. Yeah. And they often, you know, these people often believe they are more special than everyone else. Yeah. And they're often addicted to that uh, concept. That concept. And while everyone's had a unique life experience, um, this injury of no I'm more special or I deserve more attention because I've got this one special case yeah, it's is just, just ludicrous yeah and yeah. and that it allows or justifies your own condescension and and feelings of superiority towards others and, and condescension demands towards upon others. others and yeah and yeah. demands upon others no it doesn't justify any of those things i'm sorry mm. and certainly if you start exercising your demands with myself or mary you'll soon find out that we will not respond to them. <laughs> We have no desire to respond to demanding people. And even if the demand is emotional, what we yes. find is a lot of people around us are emotionally demanding. You know, they might desire glory or they might desire attention or they want you to think that they're really nice when, when the feelings coming from them aren't. And, you know, there's a whole heap of people who don't voice their true feelings, but they do express their true feelings quite openly. Mm -hmm. And those kind of people, we find it very difficult even to share our time with yeah. as well. It doesn't matter whether they're our family or, you know, prior friends or, or people who we meet in seminars or whatever. It doesn't, it's immaterial to us. So whether they're my son, my father, my mother, my sister, my brother, or anybody else, they are all my brothers and sisters yeah. uh, from God's perspective. And as such, any one of my father's children, who, of which I am one, who expresses condescension and superiority over others, 
oh, I feel that they, they do, definitely don't have a sincere humility yeah. and therefore it's going to be very, very difficult to have a true relationship with them of any kind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you mentioned about often people not expressing it overtly, but sometimes the actions that the person has taken Very are, are screaming this injury, Correct. and yet they... So there's plenty of people who engage us only, and then they, when they don't get the response they want, they ignore us, or they engage us, and then we, they don't get the response they want, so they engage the person who's sitting next to us, and the person who's sitting until they get the response they want. Yeah. These kind of people have no concept of their own injury, which is a desire for attention and glory and, and like, what's another word for glory that's another word that's probably a better word? I'm just trying to think of it, but I can't, sort of, it doesn't come to mind now, but, um, yeah, which Caleb has, um, um. sort of a, a desire to be the centre of yes. everyone's attention. Yeah. It's a it's a deep emotional injury caused usually in childhood, yeah. but but unfortunately it keeps coming up yeah. in the um, in the person and and honestly, oftentimes those people do not understand how narcissistic they're being. Yeah. They they very rarely do anything for anyone else. Yeah. They are constantly involved in satisfying their own life. And their addictions. And they blame other people. When you don't feed their addiction, they call you narcissistic or, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the reality is, like, it's the actions of a person demonstrate their true condition. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And a person who basically changes the subject whenever the subject is anything other than themselves... <laughs> has got and they change it back to being about, <laughs> about themselves. themselves that's a narcissistic person yes like we don't do that <laughs> no <laughs> but plenty of other people do yes that we yeah. that we know and, exactly. and we, we don't feel that attracted to them yeah mm. yeah yeah okay um uh, another one that we've touched on is people who are in addictions yep. generally yep. they're demanding they want their addictions met um and they just don't have any desire really to challenge those addictions or remove those addictions from themselves. Yeah, I feel we had a good illustration of that at the assistance group when I think it was Joy and I think I forget which Nina. group it was, Joy and Nina, was it? were sitting down and listening to me talk to them about their emotional injuries with men and they were attentive. Mm -hmm. And when I say attentive, I use the term very loosely because they weren't really attentive. They just wanted an attention from a man and they were getting it from me, yes. which is the only thing they wanted. Yes. So they weren't actually hearing anything I was saying to them. Yeah. And then you came and sat on my lap and immediately you could feel the antagonism in them mm -hmm. rise. And now they're very confronted and just zoned out completely because they weren't getting any attention from me because my attention was yeah. at you, I'm you. And I was instead yeah. giving them feedback in a similar vein. You were saying almost the same thing yep. I was saying but they couldn't hear it at all no. because it was coming from a woman. Yeah. So that they weren't hearing it from me either. No. Right? They were just getting an addiction met. Now, when we notice that occurring, we're not very attracted to spending more time with those people because those particular people are only there to get the emotional addiction met. That's the only reason why they're there. And this is one reason why we stopped doing some seminars a year or two ago in Australia because we could feel that many were coming just to fee feed off the attention I was giving them. Yeah. The and you have a lovely, beautiful love for everyone. Uh, when you're giving a seminar, you're passionate about truth, you love everyone there, and people feel their faith is up, they yeah. feel this beautiful man is giving me attention, and very often and then they walk, they out, walk the door out the door and can't and remember, can't remember a thing, thing. You said. Yeah. yeah. And don't apply any of it in their life. Yeah. And I, and I sort of feel like, well, you know, that's me. If I'm not careful here, all I'm doing is feeding an addiction. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, yeah. Don't want to do that. No. <laughs> you just have a yeah, sure. cough. So next group of people are people who are very spirit influenced, often at times even overcloaked, mm -hmm. uh, that, and that they quite like that influence and they don't really want to do anything about it. They don't really want, want to, change. to change. Yeah. These kind of people are difficult because um, 
you know, like I had one lady like this who bombarded me with 300 emails, which she actually counted. She actually said email number two, email number three, email number four, email number five, email number six. And it was all this sickening stuff about her sexual projections at me all the time. And it just went on and on and on. And no matter how much I told her I didn't want to do it, no matter how much I ignored her, mm -hmm. just keeps doing it. Email seven, email eight, gets up to email 200, email 300, you know, and, and, and honestly, that kind of a person is so spirit influenced, it is impossible to say anything to them without feeding either one of their addictions or the, mm -hmm. one of the spirits, or the addictions of one of the spirits with them. Yeah. Impossible to share any truth with them, impossible to share anything about love with them. There's no point in any response whatsoever, mm -hmm. aside from blocking their email yep. whenever it occurs. And Spirit influenced people, there are a lot of spirit influenced people on the planet, obviously. And it's funny how many of them are attracted to, you know, sending us a whole group of email, which usually range from initially being quite nice with us. Yeah. And then when we ignore them, being very, very nasty and often very verbally abusive yeah. uh, near the end. And, and, and we knew they would go down that track eventually because basically they're spirit influence and, and they just want an addiction met. They want this addiction with the spirit, their addiction to feel, their addiction to feel noticed and all these other things is the reason why they're overcloaked by the spirit in the first place. And the, the spirit and them, mm -hmm. it, it's difficult to interact with them because who do you interact with? Yep. Do you interact with the spirit who's overcloaking them yep. and talk to them about a whole heap of things? Yep. And then the person thinks you're talking to them yeah. or do you interact with the person and the spirit is ignoring what's being said to them and, yeah. and it's just it's like unless a person wants to clear away the spirit influence that surrounds them yeah. it's almost impossible to give them any truth yes almost impossible and really the most um oh, i want to say almost insidious and pervasive uh, how can I say that a bit more simply the most damaging spirit influence I see that people really struggle to move through I mean is this kind of spirit influence that builds people up in it's a bunch of spirits saying you're awesome you're great you're completely righteous you're yeah. completely wonderful and tell you, them that they're God and they're having a relationship with God and everything yep. and isn't it wonderful and yep. everything's wonderful and, and if you know they really need to go and basically oppress another bunch of people and that's the right thing to do and these kind of people really struggle that's as opposed to people who are getting spirit attacked and told they're terrible by spirits and things like that yeah well often a person who's being spirit attacked is actually doing the right thing mm -hmm. whereas a person who's being spirit influenced and thinks everything's wonderful yeah. is doing the wrong thing often most of the time because loving <laughs> spirits wouldn't uh influence a person correct um, to to engage in that addictive behavior yes yes mm. And so loving spirits want everyone to have their own life and not not overly influence someone. Mm -hmm. So it's only negative spirits who are really influencing people in a heavy way on the planet. Yep. And they are going to oppose people who want to love and encourage people who want to... Engage their addiction. Yeah. Yep. Whatever that addiction yep. be. Yep. And most of these people have terrible moral addictions yes. so that cause a lot of... Yep physical damage to their body, including yeah. drugs, alcohol, yeah. drink, you know, drink, um, uh, smoking, yeah. uh, the addictions of feeding off of people's energy, which is very common, yeah. particularly sexual energy, yeah. you know, where they're very sexualized and all those kind of things. All of those things are all common part of the addictions they have with these spirits. Yeah. And it is very hard to help a person who has not come to the conclusion that they're being influenced. Yes. And, and who likes the influence. Good, that's the thing. They're less likely to come to that conclusion if they're enjoying the yeah. influence. That's why I said it's so insidious and yeah. so pervasive because it happens all the time and people have absolutely, if they don't want to grow in love themselves or grow have a relationship with God, they have no motivation whatsoever to see that it's happening. No. And so it's very, very difficult to engage with someone like that yes. meaningfully. Yes. Yeah. So we, we often got bombarded, literally bombarded with spirit influenced people from all sorts of walks of life. Interestingly, you know, yeah. I find it very interesting that many Christians who bombard us are very heavily spirit influenced yeah. and they personally don't, would be shocked 
yes. that they are. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes. And yet they, they think it's God telling them that I've, I've got to hammer this person mm -hmm. and send him email after email after email after email after email, you know, basically, you know, just basically inundating us with information which we know about already and don't agree with yeah. <laughs> and have told them already, you know, and yet... And yet the spirit with them feels that they've got to do that. And so they impel the person on earth to do it because they have such control over that person on earth. And, and yet, you know, it's, and it's quite sad, yeah. but, but there's little we can do about it. Yeah. Uh, we can't, unless the person themselves wants to remove themselves from the influence they are under, yeah. there is nothing, in fact, that anybody on earth or in the spirit world will do about it. Yeah. And God himself will not do anything about it no. unless there is a pure desire for the person to remove themselves from that influence. Because it's an expression of their will. Yeah. They're, they're willfully engaged. They want that engagement. Yeah. There's little yeah. we can do to assist them. Yeah. And they just waste huge amounts of time if you begin engaging them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Okay. So I think that finishes the list, does it? Or no, no, there's still more. <laughs> we got three more uh, kind of groupings. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we've touched on this next one before. Yeah. And that's people who are addicted to their facade. Yes. And who just present to us their facade. It's very hard with them, isn't it? Yes. Because no matter what you say to them, they're always in their facade. It's like <laughs> you can't break through it. It's like it's like this. Egg, this this hardened it's no it's not an eggshell where you just go crack no it's it's this hardened like concrete <laughs> that you've got to get a jackhammer out and go do, 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 and, even then. <laughs> and even then it's <laughs> you, know, you can't get through to them yeah i found uh, that um quite challenging at our second assistance group yes in, a lot of women there in facade and it, and there was no way that i felt that i could i just felt like i was not um, interacting with the real emotions no. I could feel coming from the people. You're not. And in the end, I completely lost my voice. Yes. Because I just... What's the point of talking? I felt <laughs> that was the feeling I was resisting, the grief yes. I was resisting. The grief of what's the point of talking to a group of people who, who basically, who want to keep presenting to you their facade and who actually sincerely believe that their facade is the real thing. Yeah. And yet you can feel this whole barrage of emotional... <laughs> yeah hurt and injury yes. and rage and abuse yeah. and all sorts yes. of stuff coming yeah. from them and yet they're there going mm, smiling mm, going god mm. thanks yeah <laughs> and it is just completely false well and there's nothing you can do no. and one of the things i find saddest about that is that often people sometimes people present a facade and it's over the top of quite a lot of really rageful yucky emotions yeah. but sometimes it's over the top of emotions that i have deep compassion for like yes. shame and a feeling of fear and even just some addictions that they're that they're a bit ashamed of or that they're judging yeah i feel and there's there's different yeah. classes of people in this in this group yes certainly there's some who are more sincere than others yes uh, but even even those people who have the sort of more shameful fearful things they're trying to cover up if they continually present a facade what there is just nothing that i can do to reach them yeah. yeah and i feel like saying here like we want to have a relationship with the real you yes not somebody who's not the real you yeah and and honestly if we can't have a relationship with the real you, what's the point? Because what you're presenting to us is not really you. <laughs> it's like a figment of your imagination. It's surreal. It's it, not it's, in reality. It is surreal. And yeah. it feels surreal even interacting with them. Yeah. It feels like, am I in some la-la land of some <laughs> yeah. kind? That's what the, yeah. I suppose the media said that I am. But, <laughs> and that's what it feels like. So I go, well, but what I feel quite strongly is that the person themselves is in a is in la-la land. Yes. They, they are completely unaware of yeah. the emotions that are coming out of them yeah. and the difference between the emotions that are coming out of them and the physical condition, the emotional condition, condition. Um, that they're portraying. Yes. And, and I just feel like, wow, if you can't break through that layer, then it's very, very hard. And to be honest, it's very hard for us to interact with you if you can't break yeah. through that layer. And the very sad thing is, you mentioned it about being concrete. Sometimes to me, it literally feels like a bubble that the person has put up around them that is sort of um, stretchy. So, Spongy. you know, you try to, you can't touch that person with your love even for no. them because they're, they're blocking it. And so yeah. it, it's sort of separating them from any loving regard that I and have. And they also them. have a tendency to manoeuvre. 
Yes. Uh, and manipulate. And this is where we get back to the controlling and manipulation. Yeah, and they have a tendency to manoeuvre around what you're saying or not apply it to themselves. And yep. there's a whole lot of reasons why they do that, yep. of course, emotionally. But um, yeah, those kind of people, very hard for us to respond. But, and to respond to such a person in writing is impossible, actually because they will read everything you say thinking they already do it. <laughs> yes, and I just had an interaction today on Nikki's forum actually trying to help someone with some truth and they wrote back it was just completely in facade and I sort of felt like I really don't know what more I can say because... Well, all, they, all we can do is encourage Nikki to remove them from the forum mm. because at the end of the day, if you're in such a facade, you're not you're presenting your real self you're not going to learn anything unless you do present yeah. your real self. And, and so, yeah, there's a deep need for us to, to actually show when a person's being unloving. And, and they're being unloving not only to themselves because mm -hmm. they're not recognising their true condition, mm -hmm. but they're being unloving to other people because they're trying to present a condition to somebody that's not real. Yeah. And, and, and it's very confusing. And this yes. is why children are often very confused. Yeah. They see the smile of the person's face, but the feeling they're feeling in, in them is, oh, this person's terrible. <laughs> yeah. And they're seeing the smile, oh, yeah. they're terrible. And this is why the children often, you know, they're often reacting to the, what they're really feeling from the person rather than just a smile on the yeah. face. Mind you, of course, they're often reacting to their parents' yes, reactions feelings. to the person yes. as yeah. well. But uh, yeah, I just find it very interesting how a lot of these people have no idea that the facade is not who they are. No, and, and no. really that was a big turning point me, in me deconstructing my facade was recognising, hey, I want to hold on to these beliefs about myself to maintain my own self-delusion about where I'm really at yes. and who I really am. Yes. And <coughs> it's all about me trying to maintain control over not only other people, but what, well, what's in the really end, inside the, me. The only purpose for a facade is to maintain control over your emotions, exactly. which is actually a lack of humility. Exactly. So a person in facade often has just as much a lack of humility as a person who's angry. Yeah, mm. yeah, very true. Mm. Okay, uh, the other people that we don't <laughs> respond to are people who, um, these are people who write to us and they lecture us, they think they're doing us a big favour, um, uh, they want to correct us mm -hmm. and they often <coughs> use sort of third party material to make a big point with us um, to try and really they really just want to make a point. It's something that you've touched on earlier. Mm -hmm. They're really uh, trying to force themselves into our life mm. in order to, to basically suppress and correct us. Uh, mm. is, that a, <laughs> is that a good <laughs> yeah, summary? Yeah, no, that's a pretty good summary of, of the kind of people. Yeah. And yes, of course, like, like honestly, we've, we spend a lot of time in analysing the truths of the universe, mm. much more time than the average person spends because of the way in which we live our life, all through our life. Mm. And so when a person like that emails us and bombards us with all of their thoughts, yeah. we don't do that with other people. That's the we, main this issue, This is the main issue. Yeah. We don't bombard people with our thoughts. What we do is we invite people to listen to our thoughts. Yeah. And the way we invite is by putting something like, that's why we won't use Facebook, because mm -hmm. Facebook bombards people yeah. with other people's thoughts. In the feeds and In the feeds things and that everything. happen. Yeah. So we can't agree with Facebook on it. That's why we don't have a Facebook account and we will never have one. There's plenty of fake Facebook accounts <laughs> in our name out there, yeah. but we do not have one and we will yeah. never have one because it feeds the addiction to bombard people with your stuff. Yeah. And we're not interested in bombarding people with our stuff. We're interested in sharing information that people have to search to find. Yes, that their own seeking for truthful material leads, leads them. them to that location. Yeah. And that's why we, we love YouTube. Like whoever yeah. set up YouTube, we love you. Yeah. <laughs> we think it's a wonderful thing because it's a, it's a way of finding things yes. without bombarding people yeah. with things. Yeah. And please don't go down the Facebook page <laughs> well, line. Well, you know, they've started to introduce advertising. Of and course, and I understand YouTube. why, because yeah. it's such a big organisation with a large amount of data, but it's not something we would do. No. We don't advertise for that reason. Yeah. We don't market. It's yeah. probably market is different to advertise. Advertise is where you, you just put something on a notice board somewhere yes. and people, through their own choice, discover it. Yeah. 
Marketing is where you're in the person's face. And 20. you're trying to find avenues to enter into people's environment yeah. and their life in so order to So for example, to, to give an example, a um, having a email account is, is not marketing, but if you send a whole heap of emails unsolicited to other people, now you're marketing. Yes. One is in harmony with love and the other's out exactly. of harmony with love. Uh, with regard to phone calls, having a phone is loving, so people can, uh, can contact, contact you, you or you can contact others, but having a... Uh, you know, a marketing strategy where you ring up people unsolicited yeah. to force things upon them. That's yeah. marketing and it's completely unloving. Yes. It's out of harmony with free will completely. If a person has to tell you no yeah. before they've told you yes. Before you've said yes? No, before yes. they've told you yes. Yes. Oh, now, I see what you're saying. Sorry. If yep. a person has to tell you no yeah. before that person has told you yes, yeah then you're out of harmony with love. So if I say, would you like a drink of water? And you say, yes. Yes. Then I've enabled your free will choice. Correct. Whereas if I go, here's the water. And I've got to take it. And I've got to say, no, I don't want it. That's unloving. Yes. Right down to that little example. Yes. And people don't realize that, right? People don't realize that if if I'm forcing you Mm -hmm. into saying no, Mm -hmm. then I'm already being out of harmony with God's love. Exactly. So I'm definitely never going to be, not going to be at one with God in that state. No one at one with God in that state is in that state. In fact, everyone at one with God is so sensitive to the will and the true desires within a person's heart. Yeah, you don't they, even have to say no. no. They don't <laughs> even offer a single thing until they can feel the yes. The yes. Yes. And and this is a very important, and this is, I suppose, another one of those truths that, I, that you know, could be quotable. Yeah. If you have to say no to a person yeah. before you've said yes to a person. Before they've said yes to you. No, 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 I get it. <laughs> Sorry, I missed it. the quote. Yep. If I have to say no to you before I have said yes to you, yeah. it means you have been unloving to me. Do you understand that? I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have to say no to me before you've said yes to me, yeah. then it means I'm being unloving to you. Yeah. And you can take it down to sexual interactions, to yeah. like if I've got to say no to you when mm-hmm. you're coming on to me sexually yeah. before I've said yes to you, yeah. then basically you're coming on to me without any any um respect to my free will yes and that's out of harmony with love yeah and and these kind of people do that all the time yeah in fact a lot of the people that we've spoken about in this all do that all do that yeah yeah and that's why we're not interested in interaction yeah Yeah. because if i've got to say no to somebody before i can say yes to them Mm -hmm. uh, they're already out of harmony with love and demonstrating their disharmony with love yeah already yeah and and i and i have very little desire to spend much time with such people yeah, we want to spend time with people who we can feel from them a desire and we go yes to that desire, yeah. we want, you know, instead of it being forced upon us yeah. as a demand. Yeah. A person who's in a demand is say, you've got to say no to before you say yes to generally. And look, you usually, even if you say no to one demand, you're They'll usually going to have one. to say no to another one and, because that injury exists within them. Correct. And so until that, till they, have, they want to deal with that injury... Yeah, they have no understanding or respect for the law of free will. Yeah, none at all. Yeah, yeah. That's why you know I see certain things on telly where they do one thing and then they do another and then they compare them and they say they're the same thing. And when I look at them, I go, no, they're completely different because one is demanding something from somebody mm-hmm. and even demanding a no from somebody yeah. before you will withdraw, yeah. and the other is waiting for the other for the somebody's yes. Yeah. And that's a much better thing to do. Yeah. So, so, for example, newspaper advertising mm-hmm. is much more in harmony with love mm-hmm. than email marketing yes. or phone marketing. Because yes. newspaper advertising is waiting. People have to buy the paper. Yeah. They have to look up the pages. Yeah. They have to search. They have to decide, or oh, am I they reading that paper yes. or not? Yeah. They have to search yeah. it all because they want something. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That, that's a much more loving thing yeah. to engage than, uh, aside from maybe the trees it cuts down, but you could easily do that <laughs> yeah. on the internet. Yeah. And, but uh, but well, it's a much more loving... Well, on website, you know. Yeah, it's a much more loving thing to engage yeah. than trying to force people into seeing what you're thinking every moment of the day, like Twitter. Yes. Twitter is a, one of the most <laughs> unloving things you could ever set up. Sorry, guys, on Twitter. It's I know you spent wide. a lot of programming time doing it, but honestly, <laughs> it's one of the most unloving things you could have done, as long, along with Facebook. And, 
<laughs> and those kind of the reason why those kind of places have taken off Massively. is because they feed the addiction of people to be involved in other people's lives. Yes. Forcibly. And to have other people involved in their lives. Forcibly. And, and <laughs> it it this you spoke earlier about the self absorbed child that yes. is growing up in the world today. Yeah. And a lot of these things reflect that in they they're generated through that injury and yes. then they compound that injury they grow that injury they make yes. people feel that it's perfectly normal to have these very intrusive uh all about me driven kind of yeah. what do you call them aspects of our world well it's, i suppose it's a reflection of the narcissism in the world that most people who are even involved with these accounts have no idea that they are themselves being narcissistic yes you know, why else would you want to share that you just wiped your bum today and <laughs> just, just had a coffee just five minutes ago? And, you know, why do you need to share all of this stuff yeah. with people? What, yeah. what, what, what is the need driving you to yeah. do so? Yeah. And, and those kind of people, we find it very difficult to respond to, to be honest, yeah. because we can feel the huge addictive need. And to respond to such a need is out of harmony with love. Yeah. No celestial spirit will respond to that person yeah. ever yeah. until they get out of that. You know, of course, the social person will try to help them see that they're in that condition, mm -hmm. but they can't do it by communicating with them because as soon as you communicate with them, you're responding to the need. Exactly. So you can't, you've yeah. got to do it through some other yeah. avenue. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a big issue. Big issue. Uh, the final group of people that we don't respond to or refuse to answer yeah. are people who contact us anonymously yes this is another big one. Oh, there's a lot of problems with this there is well firstly they have no desire for open transparency or truth and so, so there we go truth and humility is already both already blocked blocked they're not being loving because they're not identifying themselves yeah. whether we know who they are or not they're still not identifying themselves voluntarily yeah and and so that means that they're being also unloving so they're being unloving they're being untruthful <laughs> and they have no yeah. humility yeah so yeah so all of a sudden there's three Exactly. Things already stopped from it. And, and so anonymous people, and we've encouraged Nikki on the forum to block anonymous people for the mm -hmm. same reasons. Anonymous people are often also quite abusive because they hide in their anonymity yeah. and use their anonymity to attack other people. And this is a, a really sad aspect of, again, the internet age, if I can call it that, I yeah. feel, is that people... And many of the emails that we receive that are very attacking and abusive are from anonymous, anonymous. Mm. And I also know, I know inside of me that if I met that person in the supermarket, there is no way they would say that. Correct. So they hide behind this medium the of the are terrified people. Generally. Yes, they, they lack courage. Yes, 100%. huge lack of courage. And mm. then they are not even willing to stand by with their own identity Correct. what they are saying. Yes. And any, anything that encourages anonymity is really encouraging this kind of person, yeah. this person that lacks courage, that, that lacks yeah. um, bravery, that lacks yeah. um, transparency, openness and honesty. Yeah. They lack love. They're not humble because they don't allow themselves to actually receive anything in return as a real personal being. Yeah. And so, yeah, the, yeah. it's a very, it's it's a very insidious yes. uh, thing that the internet has done by creating the ability to be anonymous while at the same time being destructive. Yeah. And also I feel there's a lot in this about um, exposing soul condition. Yes. There's a movie um, called Blindness. It's yes. got Julianne Moore in it. Yeah. And in it, it just plays with this idea of what happens when everyone, Everybody's blind. everyone gets a virus and everyone goes blind and suddenly people start, all society rule just goes and mm. people start acting in very, very kind of very violent, very addictive, addictive they're all addictive, feeding their addictions, horrible ways. Yes. And um, to me, I feel like it, it was playing with this idea of what happens on the internet a lot. Yeah. You know, as soon as a person feels that no one knows who they are, they begin to act in these ways that they don't... They wouldn't normally act. Yes, and mm. so to me... Of course, when, that, so when those people pass, yeah. 
they are the kind of people who are very destructive on the earth yeah. because they get away with a whole heap of things they want to do and nobody knows, Who's nobody who on earth can see them very easily yeah. and or feel them very easily. And so they don't, nobody on earth realises all of the things they're doing to them. And these kind of people love that. Yes. They love having the anon anonymity while at the same time being able to manipulate and control. Yeah. Very, very, very dangerous people. And to me, that's all, that's a, that's reflecting their soul condition. Yeah, it's, it's a very dark condition. Yeah. It's also a very terrified condition. Yeah. And it, but unfortunately, it's also it's also very manipulative and controlling condition generally. Yeah. And these kind of people are often engaged in controlling and manipulating other people. They often believe themselves to be developed, uh, but they don't give anyone the you know the opportunity, the opportunity to, to, see to, them. to see them as yeah. they really are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> and of course, we operate in a way where we're very, very transparent Correct. about who Completely we are, the opposite. about our own soul condition, about our personal finances, about where we live, about what we do, about yeah. all of these things. And so people who then contact us and demand things from us, at remaining anonymous, they're not entering an ethical exchange. They're not willing well, they're, to... Well, they've already got more from us than they're willing to give us. Exactly. We're, yeah. we're willing to tell them who we are, you know, what are things about our life, how to contact us and all the other things, they're willing to tell us nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. and, and I find it's actually pointless having interactions with those people, whether you can feel them or not. Yeah. It's, it's really just pointless because they're already in so engaged in so much conduct that's anti our teachings yeah. of divine truth and anti, in fact, social, just the social welfare of humanity. Mm that you can't enable their behavior yeah 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 okay so, yep they so. don't get much of a chance either <laughs> <laughs> so that's a big long list of all the people we refuse to answer now yeah it's not it's not really a long list i suppose we've been quite definitive specific, with the list yeah. and specific yeah. about why we don't answer them but i don't think it's such a long list no, no. Well, it's probably a long list of people <laughs> <laughs> but, but it doesn't have to be a long list of, uh, you know, uh, it's not a long list of requirements. It's actually, no. it's actually all of the requirements are based around love, truth and humility, yeah. which anybody who listens to us would surely expect um, if they understood anything yeah. we had to yeah. say to them. But, uh, but it, it is uh, unfortunately where most people live. Yeah. They live in, that, in those states. And so, you know, that's why... I suppose we don't respond to most people. Um, yeah, can I raise one final thing about that? Sure. Which is, um, some people know this about us, right? They know that we don't. Very few, <laughs> we're gone. <laughs> Sometimes I run into people who've sent me an email. Yeah. And or they, or they send me an email and then within a couple of days they send me another email yep. after I haven't responded to the first one. Yeah, often misjudging and the reason why we haven't responded to the first one though. That's what I want to raise. Then, you know, all of you listening who've just heard this long list, and then instead of feeling, <laughs> just try to guess what it is, why it is mysteriously that we haven't responded, and then get into, I find then people get into some other addictive states where they try to write to me and own up to emotions that they think that they've felt inside of themselves. Which and has that's got the nothing reason, to do with it. Yeah. Which is sometimes it is literally just that I've been busy for three days and I haven't had a chance Correct. to look at my emails. And if they um, could feel us, they'd know that. They'd know that. <laughs> and if they could feel themselves, I suppose, is, a, is something that... I wanted to point out if they took time in personal reflection of like, oh, hang on, what was driving my email? But even if it's an like, this is what's often sometimes happened. A person sent us an email about a question about God. Yeah. We haven't responded for three days. Remember, we've already said in this discussion that we probably don't respond to almost all emails because we'd <laughs> rather respond to a question about God in detail yes. and do it in a FAQ session yeah. or some kind of interview, yeah. right? So, so we, we'll just grab that question. It's not like we haven't dealt in it with no. it. We grab that question, put it in a list, prioritise it in our list of what we're going to deal with later. Yeah. Yeah. But, but they don't get the response. Yes. And so then they go and start questioning, why haven't they responded? Why haven't they responded? There must be something I did. Now, they'll either be angry mm -hmm. and send us an angry email, yeah. or they'll, they'll go all self-reflective about things that are not 
that are not true. Well, it's the operation of the facade, really. Oh, of course. Yeah. They go, maybe it's because they think I'm this, and maybe it's because they think I'm that. And actually, there's a lot of judgment that's coming out of them now towards us, thinking things that we don't even cross. They don't even cross our minds. Yes. Actually, yes. <laughs> we, you know, in the case of many of them, we don't just. We would not have the time to answer your emails. I'm sorry, but yeah. if you think about our priorities, you can understand why. And and. They're there going, oh, so now I've got to send another email to tell them that I've worked it out why yeah. they didn't email. Yeah. Now, now, now you're in another addiction yeah. right there and then. Yeah. You're in an addiction now. What are you try why are you emailing us about that? If we never responded to the first one, either we haven't had the time to do so or we feel that it fits into the categories we've just yeah. listed. Yeah. One of the two. You need to work it out yeah. for yourself. Yeah. But don't guess that it's something to do and uh, judge us based on your guess. ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Judge us based on what we've now told you our priorities are yeah. and then re-look at what you've sent. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that it's an email is already a problem for us yeah. because it's the slowest, most ineffective form of communication on the planet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably people living in 1910 would disagree with that. <laughs> no, I feel a written letter is far more effective and therefore less slow yeah. than an email. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's the reality. Right. Aside from no communication at all, email is a slight improvement. <laughs> It is, but, yeah. but it's not a major improvement over a letter, for example. A person who writes a letter, mm. generally, because they're writing it, they have to give it more consideration and more reflection. Sometimes mm. we receive letters where that has certainly happened, you know, yeah. uh, where they have consideration and reflection when they're writing. Yeah. And, um, and quite often we read those letters, yeah. even though we have not responded to them, because, again, it's writing. Priorities, and yeah. writing is slow. Yeah. And it's not the most effective form of communicating to a person. Yeah. And it's open to misinterpretation for, yeah. because of the emotional condition of the individuals who are communicating with each other. Yeah. It's, like, it's like language. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the same kind of problem. We are used to, we've had 2,000 years of interacting with people emotionally. Yeah. Can you understand from that? <laughs> Maybe I should say that <laughs> yes, to the camera. <laughs> Can you understand from that? <laughs> that that means that if you're trying to inter interact with us intellectually, there's already a huge problem with our communication because we're receiving your emotions, not what you're saying to us, but what you're feeling. That's what we're receiving. Yeah. And that's what we're going to attempt to respond to if yeah. we're going to respond at all. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>